Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Zam. Today we are going to go through a problem question or a question or a problem uh, that was given to you over the weekend. And this question is for Singapore Secondary Math. Alright, so this question is about Paul selling flower pots at his shop. So, and these are the kind of pots that uh, Paul sells, right? So these kind of questions will uh, be quite common for secondary school math, especially O level or N level E math, right? So normally this kind of question, which is a problem, uh, which is a problem solving question that requires your children or yourself to make use of mathematics to solve problem. All right, so it's a real world context kind of problem, All right? So Paul sells flower pots at his shop. And then uh, these are the sort of plant pot that was given. All right. So normally they will give you the dimensions okay, of the pot. So in this case, the open end of the plant pot is a circle of radius 10 cm. Right. So the open end here, the radius is 10 cm. All right. The closed end is a circle of radius 5 cm. So this is 5 cm. The height of the pot is 12 cm. So the height here is 12 cm. All right, the plant pot is part of a right circular cone of height 24 cm. All right, so this pot is actually part of a cone. So if you look at the cone, okay, the pot is actually part of a cone of 24 cm. So for this sort of question, it is important for your child to be, it is important for you to be able to relate the math to the real world problem. So in this case, you must be able to see the pot in terms of circles, in terms of the fact that it has a radius, in terms of the fact that it's part of a circular cone. All right. So for this kind of question, normally they will give you more information to guide you. So in this case, it is stated that the plant pot can be modeled as a frustum. Right. So frustum is is a figure that looks like this. So a frustum is made up of a cone. All right, which is then subtracted by a smaller cone below. So this is called a frustum. So this pot is modeled after a mathematical figure. In this case, it's a frustum, right? So it is given that the height of this cone is 24 cm. So this pot comes from this, right? So normally when you do problem solving, you are supposed to uh, do mathematical modeling. You're supposed to do mathematical modeling uh, based on the real world problem. So in this case, you were given the frustum, all right, to model the plant pot from, all right. So in this case, it, let's take a look at some of the questions before I go in detail how you can solve this problem. So for part A, normally this kind of question has many parts. So for A part one, you are required to work out the volume of the plant pot. Right, you're supposed to work out the volume of the plant pot and you're supposed to give your answer in liters. All right, so it's a two mark question. You're supposed to find the volume of the plant pot. How many of these plant pots can be completely filled from a 75 liter bag of compost? Right, so uh, you have asked how many of these plant pots okay, would you need if you have 75 liter bag of compost to fill up? All right, so part B of part one is another application question. Right, that requires you to think hard and carefully. So a landscaping gardener needs to paint the external curved surface of 30 plant pots. Right? So the external surface here, 30 of them needs to be painted. They are bigger. Okay, so that means now you have a different scenario. Okay, they are bigger than the original pots shown above. So these uh, plant pots that the landscaping gardener wants to paint are actually bigger. Right, so the bigger plant pot is geometrically similar to the original plant pot. Right, so in this case, your children needs to know the topic on similarity, okay, of uh, figures. So the open end of the bigger plant pot is a circle of radius twenty cm. So, uh, in this case, if you notice, the open end is ten cm, but in the bigger plant pot it is now 20 cm all right now let's move on with the question given that one liter of paint can cover 10 meters square of surface area 
The question asks, will one liter of paint be sufficient to paint the external curved surface area of 30 plant pots? All right. So this is a real world uh, scenario given, all right, which is three marks. And then the final question here is write down one assumption that you have to make to solve this problem. All right, so let me take you through how you solve such problems. All right, so this is about applying mathematics in a real world scenario. So typically, for this uh, section, it covers two main topics, number and algebra, geometry and measurement. So in this question, as you can see, it involves geometry and measurement because it talks about circles, it talks about the volume of cone, uh, it talks about volume of uh, the compost that the plant needs, it talks about surface area. All right. So let me go through with you some of the techniques your child can use or you can use to apply mathematics in a real world scenario. All right. So first, the most important thing is you know your you have to imagine that this is a real problem. You are the one that is selling the plant pots, right? So you need to figure out how to come up with solutions to the worked example given, all right? So for example, you must really, really imagine that you have a shop with these plant pots, all right? So like I mentioned just now earlier on, real world scenarios are actually instances in real life. They are real life instances, right? That means there are real people who have similar problems, right? So you're trying to solve real life problems using math. Okay, so in this case, you're supposed to use all the math concepts to solve the problem. So you have to make practical application of math. Right? So just now, as I show you, this is the plant pot. Okay? So here you have the open end, which is 10 cm okay, radius. So in this case, this is a 10 cm radius. Alright, this is the open end. And then the close end here is 5 cm radius. Alright, the high is 12 cm Okay, and the, and this is part of a cone, right? Which is called a fustrum, right? So later we'll touch more about the step by step method. Now this kind of question requires you to solve certain problems, which will give you some kind of relation to the math concepts that you've learned in school or is found in the syllabus of the exams you'll be sitting for. So when you do such question, typically it will appear in the last question in the O level paper two and N level section A of paper two. Right, so you need to ask yourself which topics are being tested. This is very important. You need to ask yourself which topics are being tested and what concepts are needed to help you solve the problem. So such questions will have a weightage of about 6 to 12 marks depending on the workings that is needed to solve the problem. So let's take a look how do you solve this problem. First things first, the question has already mentioned that this is actually the plant pot is modeled after a frustum. Right? So what is a frustum? So a frustum, like I mentioned to you earlier, is basically uh, a figure that is formed when you take a largest cone, okay, which is actually in this case 24 cm in height, and then you subtract or rather remove the figure of the smaller cone. So this is called a frustum. If you notice, the concept of frustum is not tested or it's not even in the syllabus, but it's tested because you have to apply the concept of cones, which is actually in your syllabus. Right, so in this case, they are giving you some questions connected to the real world scenario involving the pot. So the first question here is they ask you to work out the volume of the plant pot. Right, so you need to ask yourself what concept do you need to apply? Do you remember the formula? So in this case, you know very clearly this involves the volume really in relation to cones. Right, so that means if you can find the volume of this bigger cone, right, this bigger cone, the volume, and then you can find the volume of this smaller cone, you just need to minus it off. Right. In order for you to do that, you need to remember the formula for the volume of cone. Right. So do you remember the formula for the volume of cone? Right. So like I mentioned to you just now, the first term is a bigger cylinder, then you have to actually minus off. Right. So this is what is being meant by mathematical modeling. Mathematical modeling is making use of math to model something that exists in the real world. So if you can recall, Alright, when you have a cone like this, the volume is given by one third pi r square h, which is actually in the syllabus. So you have to remember. Alright, and the surface area is given by this formula, pi times r and the square root of the radius square and the height square. So you need to remember this formula and you learn how to apply it. Alright? Okay, so let's take a look at how do you solve this. Question. So you must take note of all the uh, given information. All right. You must make use of all the given information. 
So in this case, you have the 10 cm open close uh, the open area, the open part of the pot. You have the 5 cm radius of the closed part, and then you have the height of the pot and the height of the bigger cone, which is 12. All right. So let's apply the formula in this case. So basically, the volume of the plant pot is the volume of the big cone. You minus of the volume of the small cone. So you just substitute the value inside the formula. So in this case, you must be really clear what is the radius of the bigger cone and what is the height of the bigger cone, right? So in this case, we know that the radius of the bigger cone is 10 and the height of the bigger cone is 24. And the smaller cone, the radius is 5 and the height of the smaller cone is 12. So all you have to do is substitute the values inside the formula and then you can easily use your calculator to find the final answer. But something to take note of here, the answer that is being required is in liters. So make sure you convert cm cubed into liters, right? So you get 2.1994 liters. But remember, when you are doing your math, you must always bring it down to three significant figures, right? Three significant figures. So in this case, three significant figures would be up to two decimal places, which is 2.20 liters. So as you can see, it is not that difficult, right? It, it requires you to figure out what uh, workings that you need to solve the problem. All right. So in this case, like I mentioned to you, this is a formula that we used, right? So you must remember the formula. All right. Now let's move on to the next question. How many of these plant pots can be completely filled from a 75 liter bag of compost? So just now we actually found out that one pot is 2.2 liters, right? So all you have to do is just take a very simple calculation of 75 divided by 2.1994 so in this case you don't divide by 2.2 because 2.2 is already estimated so you take a more accurate or a more accurate number in this case you can just plug in the full number that you get take 75 divided by this and then again you round it off to the three significant figures so in this case it's 34 pots all right so that's one mark very easy uh, application all right, and then the questions become more interesting and it requires you to be even more creative to come up with the solutions. So you must always remember to visualize the problem. So this is what was given to you. So you must read carefully and understand clearly, all right, and look out for the givens and the solution, right? What is the solution that they want? So in this case, they're talking about a landscaping gardener who needs to paint the external K curve surface area of 30 plant pots which are in this case bigger than the original plant pot. So now it is not just the normal plant pot that you have, but it's bigger. And then in this case, they give you a clue that the bigger plant pot is geometrically similar. So in this case, they're testing you on similar figures, right? So you must remember all those that you learn, all the concepts that you learn in regards to this topic. And then in this case, they are now giving you another information. The open end of this bigger plant pot is a circle of radius 20 cm. So in this case, the bigger plant pot now Okay, it's 20 cm radius. Okay, whereas the smaller plant pot, just now the one that we were handling uh, the question earlier on, it is only 10 cm. All right, and they did mention that it's geometrically similar, right? So they are similar geometrical figures. All right, and then the question goes on to tell you that one liter of paint can cover 10 meter square of surface area. Right? And then they ask you a question, will one liter of paint be sufficient to paint the external curve area of 30 bigger plant pots? So if you notice, all that is required from you is a yes, no answer, right? Will it or will it not? But because this is math, you have to show your working, then you will get your full three marks, all right? So let's take a look at how you solve this problem. Okay, so before you do that, like I mentioned to you, you must ask yourself, what concepts do you need to apply? Right, so you need to remember all your concepts. So in this case, it's actually quite, quite straightforward. Number one, you need to be able to calculate the surface area of the cone, the curved area of the cone. Number two, you need to be able to also understand geometrically similar figures. How do you form the relationship between geometrically similar figures? All right, so these are the two concepts like I mentioned, surface area of cone and similar figures. So as I mentioned just now, the original plant pot, the circle of radius 10 cm, and the bigger plant pot is a circle of radius 20 cm. All right. So you need to apply this again. So in this case, we are just looking at the surface area. So you must remember this formula, which is pi times r times the 
times the square root of the sum of the squares of the radius and the height. All right. So, and then the other thing you need to take note of is the scale factor for areas or geometrically similar figures. So, when you're talking about uh, the area, okay, how it is being related, you actually take the radius of the two figures in a ratio form and then you square it. So, in this case, I can easily apply it in this manner, right? So, if you look at this, okay, let me just go through with you. So, the slant height of the bigger cone, okay, of the pot is given by this. Okay, how do you know it's given by this? Because the, 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 the slanted uh, height is given by this because, all right, is because of Pythagoras theorem, right? So this is actually just a revision Pythagoras theorem. So this is the slanted, slanted height. All right. So this is given to you, and this is also given to you. This is the radius. This is the height. Right. So to find this, this is by Pythagoras theorem. So you just take ten square because this is a bigger cone. So this is actually the radius, and this is the height. Right of the original pot. So you get twenty six cm. And then the slant height of the smaller cone in the original pot is given by this, which is 13 cm. Alright, so how do you calculate it? Very simple, you just take the bigger cone minus of the smaller cone, right, to get the external surface area. So in this case, the external surface area of original pot A1 is simply this, right, minus of the smaller cone. Because remember, here you're talking about the pot. The pot doesn't contain uh, the whole entire Silly, uh, cone right so in this case it is not it doesn't include this so you have to minus this off so you have to minus this surface area off okay by the smaller cone likewise for the bigger part you need to minus off the other portion of the cone because in this case the bigger part is now a bigger cone so you need to minus off this part all right so this is what you do you minus off the smaller parts all right. So in the end, what you get from the original surface area is 195 pi cm square, and then the other bigger part is now 780 pi cm square. All right. So this is the long method. The short method you can use this. All right. You can actually just use this. Uh, you just put the radius of the bigger circle and the radius of the smaller circle. So in this case, this is 10. This is 20. Right. So you just use this uh, geometric factor scaling. All right, then you just plug in the value of the area that you can find. So you have 20 over 10 square, and then you find the area to be 780 pi cm square. So this is the area, but this is not the end of the story, right? You need to convert, okay? You need to convert your answer into meter square, right? So you have found the external surface area, you need to get the surface area in meter square for each pot so this is just for one pot so you need to multiply by 30 so you get this meter square and then if you calculate 7.35228 meter square is actually less than 10 meter square all right so is it sufficient for one liter of paint yes it is sufficient because the um, the surface area is actually smaller than 10 meter square so that is your answer yes it is sufficient all right so now Typically, this kind of question will ask you to write down the assumptions that are made, right? So most of the time, you have to ask yourself, what assumptions did you make based on this concept? You know, like based on this uh, application question, what is it that you assume? So like, for example, if you think about it, the que normally when we paint pots, do we just cover it once? Do we just do it one coating or two coatings? Because in this case, if you had needed to do two coatings, right, or three coatings, probably you'll need more paint. Right, so in this case, the assumption that you make based on this question was that one coating of paint is sufficient. Right, so normally, this kind of question, they will just want to take a look at how uh, you can reason mathematically and what assumptions you use to come out with the method. Alright, so this is the sort of questions we're going to go through to help your child be able or to help you be able to solve problems. So. Uh, for secondary school math, the kind of problems you solve will be this sort of problem whereby you apply your mathematical uh, concepts, convert it into a mathematical model so that you can solve real world problems. Alright, so I will join you. I hope you can join me again in the next problem that we're going to solve so that you get better and better in uh, real world scenarios. Okay, how to use math to solve problems in real world scenarios. Alright, so see you again. Thank you.